Good day, everyone. MRI scanning of people living in re remote areas and our ability to study certain human behaviors are largely inaccessible by current MRI technology due to its large size, expense, and infrastructure requirements. In this five-year project, a multidisciplinary team of researchers in a multi-institutional consortium have designed and are building an easily relocatable head-only 1.5 Tesla scanner weighing only about 500 kilograms. The goal is to develop a radically new type of MRI scanner that will provide new capabilities for structural and functional studies of human brain and ultimately enable the diagnosis of neurological diseases in underserved populations throughout the world where MRI scanners are currently inaccessible. There are two parts to my talk. First, I'll describe the hardware components of the head-only 1.5 Tesla MRI system that we're building. Then I'll discuss some of the methods we're using to allow us to perform MRI with a highly non-uniform magnetic field like that produced with our head-only magnet. <clears throat> the magnet was designed and is being constructed by Ben Parkinson's team at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. Let me start by describing some of the unique features of the MRI magnet designed by Ben for this project. The magnet has a reduced length that permits the subject's shoulders to remain outside the magnet. It also has a window through which subjects can see out, improving user experience and facilitating behavioral and more motor coordination studies. The magnet is robust and can be rapidly cooled since it is constructed from high temperature superconductor. Finally, the magnet is small and light enough to be readily transported to remote places to study populations not usually reached by MRI. As you know, most MRI magnets require much of the body to, play, to be placed inside the magnet bore. You might think it is possible to simply reduce the bore diameter and length as shown on the left to make a small magnet, but this is not the case because the amount of superconductor wire and thus the cost to produce a magnetic field suitable for conventional MRI quickly becomes prohibitive as shown on the right. Alternatively, our approach is to develop and use MRI methods that can, to can tolerate large magnetic field non-uniformity. Early in this project, we developed specialized MRI methods and used them to determine what level of magnet non-uniformity could be tolerated in MRI. Using this information to constrain the design, Ben Parkinson created the 1.5 Tesla head-only magnet you see here. Shown are the different positions and sizes of the superconductor coils. In the center where the brain will be located is shown the region of usable magnetic field homogeneity. The magnet has been designed to allow the shoulders to remain outside the bore and has a gap between the upper and loyal lower sets of coils for a window. As compared to a normal MRI magnet, our high temperature superconducting magnet has a very simple internal configuration. A solid state cryo cooler is bolted directly to the superconductor coils and by conduction, the coils are cooled. There is no need for a thermal radiation shield since the cryo cooler absorbs any heat. On the right is a mock-up of the MRI scanner. Hopefully you can appreciate how this system will improve user experience as compared to standard MRI, whereby the subject must lie inside a long tube. In this cutaway view of the scanner, I'd like to draw your attention to another innovative hardware component in a, indicated in green, which is a multi-coil or MC array used both for improving field uniformity and for spatial encoding the MRI signals. The MC array serves the role of both shim coils and gradient coils that exist in standard MRI scanners, but the MC array provides greater flexibility 
for dynamically shaping the magnetic field. To help you understand how the MC array is different, let me briefly describe gradient coils as shown here that are using conventional MRI. Typically, there are three different gradient coils, each of which produce, produces a linearly varying magnetic field in one of the three spatial directions, X, Y, and Z. The variation in magnetic field strength that each of these coils produces imprints spatial information on the MRI signals, enabling imaging. This way of producing magnetic field grains is based on decades of work using magnets that produce highly uniform magnetic field. By contrast, the multi-coil array, which was developed in the laboratories of our collaborators, Christoph Yukum at Columbia and Robin de Graaf at Yale, is composed of many independently controlled coils. As compared to standard gradient coils used in MRI, the MC array affords increased flexibility for shaping magnetic fields while occupying less precious space inside the bore of the magnet. In our scanner, we will use a 31 coil array for both for shimming and gradient generation. The CAD drawing on the left shows the centerpiece comprising the various shape coil elements, an eight pipe parallel circuit for water cooling and coil specific temperature sensor. It has structures for mounting and connections above and below. On the right is a CAD model of the infusion mold to make the MC array. Inner and outer parts can be assembled to provide a vacuum tight space for resin infusion of the center piece. The structure is subsequently taken apart to, re to release the cured center piece. Just recently, we, we showed that the MC array can be used instead of conventional gradients for imaging the human brain. Please note, these images were not acquired with the new head-only group magnet, which is still under construction, but instead used the four Tesla magnet at Yale to demonstrate proof of principle. Gradient echo images are on the left and spin echo images are on the right. Note, there is little difference between images acquired using conventional gradients shown in the top row versus the MC array in the bottom row. This project, has a subcontract to Alberto Tanis' lab at Sir Mag at the University of Sao Paulo in San Carlos, Brazil. They have built a state-of-the-art controller, also known as the spectrometer, for our new MRI system. Their flexible, completely digital spectrometer called the DMRS is compact, yet has eight channels for parallel transmit and eight channels for parallel receive. The DMRS uses synthesized hardware and the whole system is integrated into a single FPGA. The synthesized processors were tailored specifically to address the needs of MRI experimentation. No commercial trip, chip has similar functionalities. The Integrated Development Environment or IDE makes use of modern software development tools for creating MRI methods, also known as pulse sequences. This spectrometer is currently interfaced to a whole body 1.5 Tesla scanner at the CMRR at the University of Minnesota, where it's being used to acquire images and test system components. Finally, we come to the RF coil that has been built for this system. It's based on Tommy Vaughn's TEM design. It's an eight element TEM coil with integrated TR switches and preamps. It can operate in a circular polarized mode or in parallel transmit mode with up to eight separate transmitter elements. Example, 1.5 Tesla images acquired with this coil when using the 1.5 Tesla whole body magnet at the CMRR are shown. Now let me briefly describe the methods employed to image with extremely non-uniform magnetic field. For frequency encoding, we will use the highest bandwidth possible within certain limits to minimize field dependent image distortion. The remaining image distortion in the frequency encoded dimension is corrected in post-processing using the known magnetic field profile. Spatial encoding in the other two dimensions of the 3D image is done with phase encoding, which is insensitive to magnetic field in homogeneity. Here is one pulse sequence we will, will use to perform MRI with extreme magnetic field non-uniformity. 
It is a 3D version of a missing Paul steady state free procession sequence developed by Pats et al. To demonstrate its tolerance to field and homogeneity, we modified a standard head gradient set so that it could be mounted far from the isocenter of our four Tesla magnet where the field is rapidly dropping off. In fact, the head gradient was positioned 36 centimeters away from the isocenter of our four Tesla magnet as shown here, and we performed imaging with it. Here you can see examples of the images that were acquired. The image labeled distorted image is the raw image with no post-processing. And to the right of that is the corrected image obtained by including in the post-processing steps information about the magnetic field non-uniformity that was mapped, which is shown in the upper left. As another example, here I show a single slice from a T1-weighted 3D gradient recalled echo acquisition with the 1.5T whole body magnet, having a good shim on the top and a bad shim, giving 12 kilohertz frequency variation over the brain at the bottom. These are the raw images. No post-processing distortion correction has been performed. As you can see, except for a modest degree of distortion due to the inhomogeneity's effect on the frequency encoding, the images are very similar in quality and signal to noise ratio using a relatively high acquisition bandwidth and a short echo time, in this case, 4.3 milliseconds, made this imaging possible despite extreme field in homogeneity. So to conclude, as I have shown, we are close to having all hardware components assembled for this radically new type of high field MRI scanner. If circumstances allow, we hope to have components integrated into this system by late 2021 and, er and in early 2022 to start acquiring images. Even though we don't yet have the actual head magnet and the MC array built for it, I have shown that we're able to image with a highly non-uniform magnetic field. In experiments, we have shown the feasibility to image with as much as 125 kilohertz of frequency of variation across the brain. Furthermore, we have shown it's possible to generate different types of contrast, including T1, T2, and diffusion contrast. Although at this time, we still don't have a method to image with T2 star contrast, but we're working on that. And it may turn out that we may, for functional imaging, we may need to use alternative contrast, such as T1-based inflow sensitive sequences like SWIFT, which we have previously shown can be used for functional imaging. Finally, I'd like to express my deep gratitude to our team of collaborators and, our, and their group members for their dedication and critical scientific contributions to this project. And I'd like to thank you for your attention.